These two are gone. These two are new, and I'm still getting two more. This is Nielsen Dynasty. Please like, share, and subscribe. Buy some silver and some platinum. And be kind, helpful, and grateful, because it's better than being a jerk. Here's another flower fixing to go off. Oh, yeah, tomatoes. They're uh, coming to the end. I mean, I've given away so many people don't want them anymore, and they're fucking rotten on the vine. I still have peppers, still have black tomatoes, cherries. Neighbor still has a lot of tomatoes. I'm getting yellow jalapenos. Second round. Potatoes are blooming, and back behind there, some cucumbers are still growing. And I got some kale mixed in. Little uh, salad, I guess. Tomatoes, cucumbers. Kale. Sorry, sorry to get into the house. And look who's at the door. Oh, four. Where's the fifth one? Ah, she's asleep on the clothes in here. But that's not what this is about. This is about me being able to walk around and not have any issues whatsoever with stability. <laughs> no, it's not about that either. I'm gonna get the volume up here so you guys can hear this. This is the South African president who is going to run the G20 in 2025 next year. It'll be Brazil this year, it's India. Three BRICS countries <clears throat> that aren't following step with what BRICS wants. India's included a South African coalition into the G20. And uh, I don't know what Brazil is going to do next year when their uh, presidency reign starts. But this guy here is going to take the presidency of the G20 in 2025. So let's see what he has to say. <laughs> totally not what the Chinese and the Russians are saying. That's for damn sure. Let's see here. 2023. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa delivered a passionate address at the United Nations General Assembly condemning the excessive spending on warfare at the expense of global development initiatives. Ramaphosa emphasized that the world was falling short of its ambitious United Nations backed goals of ending extreme global poverty by 2030 partly due to funding issues caused by the powerful global north reneging on its promises to donate billions of dollars towards achieving this goal. He then pointed out that the wealthy global north, however, had no problem spending trillions of dollars on wars while billions of people worldwide wallow in poverty. As many people around the world are confronted by hunger and want, the essential human qualities of cooperation and solidarity must be evident in the actions that we take to bridge the divide between the wealthy and the poor. We must summon the necessary will and resolve to regain the momentum towards the achievement of the 2030 Agenda. This means that we must address the fundamental developmental challenges that have long cherished, characterized as well our unequal world. To address the developmental challenges that face many people in the world, we are required to focus on targeted investment, on technology transfer, capacity building support, especially in key areas such as supporting industrialization, building infrastructure, ensuring that agriculture investment takes place, ensuring that there is investment in water, energy, education, and health. This also requires predictable and sustainable financial support, including supportive trade policies from the international community. We call on the partners of the wealthier countries to meet the financial commitments they have made. It is a matter of great concern 
to us from the global south that these wealthier countries in the global north have failed to meet the undertakings they made to provide a hundred billion dollars a year for developing economies to take climate action. This must be changed and the money must be made available in the interest of development. We support the proposals outlined in the Secretary General's Sustainable Development Goal Stimulus. In particular, we support the call to tackle debt and debt distress that many countries, particularly in the Global South, are burdened by. And we support the call to massively scale up affordable long-term financing to $500 billion a year and to expand contingency financing to countries that are in need. It is a grave indictment on this international community that we can spend so much money on war. And in fact, trillions are being spent on war, but we cannot support action that needs to be taken to meet the basic needs of billions of people in the world, needs such as addressing hunger, health, empowering women, and making sure that there is development in countries that are vulnerable. President Cyril <laughs> Ramaphosa's address at the United Nations General Assembly highlights a bitter truth that has been a concern for many years. The stark contrast between the vast sums of money spent on warfare and the lack of sufficient funding for global development initiatives particularly those aimed at ending extreme poverty by 2030, is a glaring example of misplaced priorities. Several affluent Western nations have indeed committed substantial resources to support Ukraine in its conflict with Russia, while the progress towards achieving global development goals stagnates. It's disheartening to witness such a stark disconnect between the world's ability to mobilize funds for wars and its inability to allocate similar resources to alleviate the suffering of billions living in poverty. This situation underscores the urgent need for a recalibration of global priorities. If the world is to make meaningful progress towards ending poverty by 2030, it must prioritize investments in development and poverty alleviation over conflicts that often seem driven by political considerations by redirecting resources towards the welfare of the most vulnerable populations, governments and international organizations can demonstrate their commitment to a more equitable and just world. Ramaphosa's statement serves as a wake-up call, urging wealthy nations to reconsider where they allocate their financial and human resources if they genuinely aspire to eradicate poverty and build a brighter future for all. What do you make of South Africa's Cyril Ramaphosa's speech criticizing powerful Western countries for spending trillions on wars instead of alleviating global poverty? That is a good question, considering that his number one ally, I guess, mm. if you believe that BRICS is going to be anything, his number one ally of Russia, the leader of BRICS, along with, I guess, China, uh, they all seem to uh, disagree with this guy who's also in BRICS which is amazing and brings me back to, yeah, BRICS has all the GDP. They have all the money. They have all the resources. They have everything. They're all this. They're going to be great. Yeah, follow everyone who says that. And then look at it for yourself. And look at this right here that I just reported. Really? Yeah, they're blaming the Western nations for spending all that money. Well, this is a good thing that they do that because what you see is the crap's piling up on one side of the coin. The, the Western nation, and I agree, we're wasting money over there for sure. But they left out the other side of the coin of, well, Russia's wasting even more money than America is. And everyone that supports Russia, most of the BRICS nations, Iran is giving Russia suicide drones. I mean, oh, wow, you know, and they're all BRICS. They're all BRICS. BRICS in the wall that's supposed to be a greater future. 
I mean, I just don't see it. 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 But, you know, maybe I'm blind and everything I see is, it isn't what it says it is. And actually what he meant is don't invest in Africa because we love you spending trillions on war. We want to stay impoverished, Mr. Russia. And, and the other people are spending half as much on the war. But, you know, Russia spent twice as much as the Western nations. And they're bricks and they're not helping their allies. South Africa really is not, you know, it's not in the U.S. coalition, are they? They're in BRICS. So they're really not our allies. But yet we're still sending money to them and helping them. Not like we should, obviously not. We're wasting it on this stupid-ass Ukraine crap. But, you know, that's only half the story. The other half of the story is Russia and the Russian black nations are spending more. A lot more. So, you know, and also you got to consider... This guy's part of BRICS, and he's going to be running the G20. The G20 is going to be determining where finances go. Oh, so this is what? An indicator of his outlook when he runs the G20. He's going to put all of the world finances that he can towards his goal, as you have just heard out of his own mouth. Brazil has the presidency next year. India or India has it for 2023. Brazil has it 2024. And then South Africa has presidency in 2025. All three BRICS nations that all are working 100% against BRICS in their actions and in their mouths. So if you still believe that, uh, you know, BRICS is going to be something, good on you. Maybe one day it will, but not in its current firm with all of the countries. Uh, I don't know what, uh, something will come out of it. I don't know what, but it's not going to be the BRICS that we see right now because uh, India, the I in BRICS, is on board with South Africa, which is the S in BRICS, which is on board with Brazil, which is the B in BRICS, that, that BRICS shouldn't be going in the direction it's going, that Russia and China are taking it in. Yeah, that, that sounds like a cohesive group, bro. And then you bring in some, some radical nations that are totally down with insurrection activity and no human rights and totalitarianism. Throw them into BRICS now and see how great it's going to be. Holy crap. Talk about, I mean, I know America's going to be a train wreck. Damn, they're trying to outdo us on the train wreck, in my opinion. Anyhow, you guys have a nice night. Make sure to be kind, helpful, and grateful. And buy some platinum. The only resource that is currently moving forward to be mined in, on the moon and on the asteroids in outer space is platinum. They're not going for gold, uranium, or titanium, zinc, copper, lead, nickel, uh, uh, H3, hydrogen 3, oxygen, water. They're not going to be mining that. The first mining they're going to be doing is for platinum because the platinum is the most scarce resource on our planet. Uh, Google it. Take about two minutes and Google it try and find out for yourself what, how, how, when we're going to run out of platinum on this planet, when we're going to mine it out at current usage. And then find out what new technologies are coming that are going to increase that use case, meaning more need as we're declining in supply. Need supply. X is where the price is. It's gonna go up. Holy crap. That's just regular economics like Lobo and 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 Rick Rule and 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 Bill Holter use. Just regular economics. So I guess they should agree with me that platinum is going up. If they know anything about economics. They might only know about precious metals though, and not the economics part of it. Maybe that's why they don't like platinum. Who knows? But till uh, I'm proven wrong. Buy yourself some platinum, because the way I see it, it's going to go, baby. Have a nice night.